Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. All right, kids, all aboard the field trip to Kingtown. Richard Dreyfus to Stand By Me, River Phoenix to Explorers, James Cromwell to The Green Mile, Jeffrey DeMunn to The Shawshank Redemption, Gail Bellows to Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, Javier Botet, It. It was a discovery. Tonight, we launch. Beyond their imagination. Yeah, open up. Let's see what you can do. Are you serious? Yeah. Now it's taking them to a place. We're going straight up. Beyond the stars. We are going where no man has gone before. They're here. River Phoenix and Ethan Hawke star in an out-of-this-world adventure. Me Ben. Me Tarzan. No! It's intergalactic fun for the entire family in The Explorers. Guys, I um, I think tonight, since we're watching a kid's movie, we should try not to swear at all. We might get a few younger listeners for this episode, and uh, I'm just thinking we should tone back the cussing. Yeah, I agree. Especially true given that, you know, this is a PG movie. Hey, oh, no. Jaws was PG, and it had swearing. Oh, it was. Oh, Swashbuckler was, too. And Apollo 13. <laughs> Oh, no shit. Wait, so was Top Gun. Nice save, Nigel. Uh, Don't forget airspace. Okay, okay, fine. I get it. Damn, guys, you made your point. And we've already messed up the no swearing thing. Well, hang on, hang on. I don't think damn is really a swear word, though. Is it? Um, Maybe? I don't know. Although I did get in trouble in sixth grade for saying that sucked. (laughs) Wait, really? Yeah, the whole situation was really fucked messed up <laughs> nice save uh continue yeah no worries but uh yeah we were playing a game of wiffle ball and i struck out and then uh, as i went to sit down i said that with an earshot of my teacher and she apparently didn't like that and called my mom about it really what a effing excuse me <clears throat> what an effing bitch nice save that definitely qualifies what effing or bitch the latter stop saying it what Bitch? That's not a swear word. Uh, I think in the context that you used it, it is. Bollocks it is. Who'll say that either. Why not? It, so mean, it means balls. So does that mean dick's off the table too? My arse dick is off the table. You know what? Never fucking mind. God, God damn, damn it, Dan. Dan. Hello, bots and listeners, mostly bots. Is it still mostly bots? Who cares? Welcome back to the fire pit. I'm Dan, British name Nigel, and we have made our first stop on the field trip to Kingtown. But all kids back in the bus because we're off again. After leaving an anonymous phone call on where to find the body, we're back on track to it. But first, we need to get through tonight. And as per our rules, we've taken an actor actress from our last film, moved them on to here, and to tell us who we're watching and what we're watching tonight, I turn things over to Josh. Thank you, Dan, as always. Hello, everyone. I'm Josh, British name Reginald. And we watched Robert Shaw try to be a pirate and swashbuckler and then try to kill a shark in Jaws the week after. And he was unsuccessful in both, by the way. Although he did get eaten by said shark. However, his co-star in the shark hunt was uh, the always classy, never tardy Dick Dreyfus. <laughs> <laughs> then, last week, we heard his soothing voice, better known as Richard Dreyfus narrating a young Wesley Crusher's early years in Stand By Me. Now this week, we will take Will Wheaton's best friend, River Phoenix, 
and continue on to one of my personal favorite films from my youth, 1985's Explorers. And now, to give a rundown on this film, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Thompson. Thompson? Dick dry face. (laughs) (laughs) I shouldn't have laughed that hard at that. But thank you, Reginald. Yes, I'm Thompson. American name Tom. And yes, tonight we are watching Explorers. Released 1985, July 12th. Uh, Sorry, that's my... uh, of military coming through July 12th, 1985 for those who were not in the military. It had a budget of 20 to $25 million, which is not a small amount for the eighties and had a box office of $9.9 million, which was a small amount for the eighties. It stars Ethan Hawke, River Phoenix, both. This was their first role. Robert Picardo, who we know from Interstellar and a couple other things, and also the Doctor Inter- from Sports. In- Interspace, Inter- thank you. Inter- He's not in Inter- Interstellar. Yes, yes. <laughs> I imagine he was in Interstellar. In my heart, he was there. He would have done a great job in Matt Damon's role. Ah, oh, if only. But this film also starred Jason Preston and Amanda Peterson. This film had a Rotten Tomato score of 77% and an IMDb score of 6.5 out of 10. This is uh, one of those mid-80s kids' adventures on bikes stories. They find a force field, they uh, build a ship, and they go sailing into the stars, uh, very much trying to emulate the Spielberg EN style of E.T. and such that was big at the time. But while... Not quite a Spielberg movie. It is a Joe Dante film, who was a friend of Spielberg. And a lot of his films have a Spielberg feel to them. And kind of, I think, get mistaken for Spielberg in a lot of ways, like Gremlins and such. Speaking of Gremlins, too, this film mentions Kingston Falls. So, Connected Universe! There's a scene with Dick Miller's character. There's like a newspaper headline that says, Kingston Falls quote-unquote riot still unexplained and of course dick miller was in the last film so it's all coming together now side tangent i kind of hope we get to gremlin someday i have not actually seen that movie in over a decade and i almost watched it the other day and i thought we might get to it on the podcast someday the film still holds up it's a reason why he was tapped to do this film Although it's, I have some thoughts about uh, studios having expectations for directors and then basically chopping off their legs at the knees and still expecting them to win the race. This, because this film was the film that never had a chance. This came out right around the same time as E.T. and the studio really wanted that Spielberg wave. So, I mean, they took Dante, who again, came right off of gremlins which had a box office of well over a hundred million dollars not long before this film which again 80s money freaking phenomenal Mm -hmm. but because et and all that and plus it was a summer market the studio was just like no we need this out now it's got to make the we got to get it out it was supposed to be released in august but they moved it to july so it's like no whatever you got we we got it so Dante was quoted as saying there was at least an hour and a half of footage that was just left on the cutting room floor. So My God. I know. Yes. I mean, yeah, the thing was, this movie also competed not to step on your toes here, Thompson, with Back to the Future. It was released on Back to the Future second week in theaters. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, damn it. Oh, well, talk about never having a chance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like it premiered the same week as Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Flip. Well, that was more of an adult film. This was supposed to be for kids. You know what, though? That's kind of funny because Back to the Future was also released on trying to catch that Spielberg wave. Mm -hmm. Back to to the Future is not a Spielberg movie, but they wanted him to direct it really bad. Like, Also, interestingly enough, The Goonies was on its sixth week of release. It was number 10 on the box office that week. Dang. So they're right on the tails of uh, Goonies. So they're probably wanting to pull that money in to... Because mm-hmm. at that point, Goonies had made uh, $51 million. Yeah, and but as we saw with Predator 2, man, it's like when a studio doesn't give you time to really polish a film, it shows. Uh, even Dante was quoted as saying, you'll never see the film I wanted to make. This is a movie I got to make, 
up to a certain point and then had to stop. So it's I'm also a little more positive, you no, know, because we got a little dour there. We go back to Spielberg and Lucas and all those films that were big around this time. This was also the first American motion picture that Industrial Light and Magic cut its teeth on. It oh, actually, interesting. yeah, co yeah, co-produced with this one. So a little, little, little happier trivia there right oh, also but you're missing the big one here dan or tom sorry <laughs> no. what uh, was the next movie that joe dante went to direct after this that is a good question josh let me pull up the imdb and oh my find God. Out. dan go ahead and take this because tom clearly wasn't reading the chat <laughs> joe dante actually from this movie went on to direct a movie that we've already covered inner space that's right. That's right. I was actually looking at that earlier, but technically there were like a few TV series episodes he directed before this. Thank you for reminding yeah, so, me. That. Yeah, episode seven of our podcast. We've already been uh, introduced to a Joe Dante film, Inner Space, and we all like that movie. So I'm kind of interested in seeing this movie. Uh, I know this one's more of a kid's movie, whereas Inner Space is more of a dramedy. But uh, I am definitely looking forward to seeing this because having been a fan of Inner Space, being a fan of Gremlins, I, Joe Dante to me is a good director. What are you hoping to get out of the film altogether? Just like a nostalgia? Just general entertainment? What's... Well, I don't have the nostalgia for this movie that Josh does. I don't even think I've ever heard of it until Josh presented his list a couple weeks ago when we were going to go to It. Mm -hmm. So I don't have the nostalgia for this movie that Josh does. But... When I looked up the movie, when we were going through those lists, I was like, how did I never see this as a kid? So uh, maybe I'm kind of looking forward to seeing a lost gem, so to speak, or maybe something that I could be angry at myself that Kid Dan didn't get to see. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be interesting. I don't have the nostalgia. So sometimes when I see kids movies without a nostalgia filter, I'm a little more down on them than I would be if I had seen it as a kid. Mm -hmm. And watching it as an adult and thinking Ugh, this isn't really working mm -hmm. but um I, it's kind of hard for me to say what i'm hoping to get out of it i'm just maybe just hoping to be entertained for a couple of hours even though it's a kid's film okay reginald how about you um well i like i said i've seen this movie a lot like i think I, it was on uh, netflix and I, so I've seen it within the past two or three years. But like when I was a kid, I loved this movie. Like I remember watching it almost on repeat because I just love the concept. And, and obviously I've always had an effect. Affinity? Affinity. Thank you. God damn that word. I was like affection. No. <laughs> Infinite. No. Yeah. But yes, I've always had an. Uh... English is hard. Just it is. Tom. It <laughs> is. Just ask Tom. He studied it for five years. <laughs> Fuck you. Space travel. That's why I was a. Uh... <laughs> Big fan of like Star Wars, Star Trek growing up and, you know, NASA and everything like that. So this may have been one of those things that kind of seeded that interest in me. But I'm just I'm honestly looking forward to watching it again with you guys, because last time I did watch it, I was kind of on in the background. So I didn't really pay that much attention to it. Sure. The, the thing I'm loving about doing this with you guys is sitting down and paying attention to these movies and trying to find stuff that if I've seen them before. I haven't seen prior viewings or this being introduced to new movies. Mm hmm. And actually pay attention to them. So, Thompson, what about you? What are your expectations? None. In fact, negative on this one. Let's start with reason one behind that. This was a rush job. Maybe not in creating it, but definitely in editing. And if we've discussed in the past, not to brag about the power of the editor, a film can be broken by bad editing. Or made it's with good editing. Correct. And we, Predator 2, which was, go watch that episode, you know, what was like episode 12 or 13 or so. We'll go through the back catalog listeners and bots. We discussed that to some length. It, that film had no time to edit. In fact, they were editing as they were filming and it showed. It was a good film, but just couldn't quite meet its potential. And this is, it sounds like a, the same sort of thing. Plus it's uh, a film that was geared towards kids just from the trailer and the reason why we'd not heard of this film because it basically went from theaters right to home video and we've all seen those kind of films uh, the ones that are in theaters just long enough so they can brag that it was in theaters and yep. those rarely turn out well uh, and that was episode 10 predator 2 is our 10th episode Thank yeah, you, like, resident historian Reginald. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm looking on the box office mojo page, and this thing looks like it was in theaters July 12th and out of theaters July 21st. Oof. Oh, it's worse than I thought. Uh, we did just establish it ran into that juggernaut that was Back to the Future, that indie film that no mm-hmm. one saw coming. And it's not like it had much of a cast or anyone else to really draw people in. With the exception of Dick Miller and uh, Mensch Taylor, everyone else, this was like their first or second role. Robert Picardo's in it, but he's in makeup for, like, all of it. Oh, even, and his role isn't character. even until the very end. And no one's going to see oh, a wait, film no. for Robert Picardo. That's right. No, I, I just remembered his role in the film. I got his confused with a different one. Yeah, he's, like, he's barely in the film. Like, barely in <laughs> Yeah. It does seem to have a bit of a cult following. There are some people that, you know, when I was going through IMDb and all that, there are some people that have some nostalgia for the film, and you know, rewatch it as adults and it still holds up for them. But we've seen one or two movies where IMDP has had fondness and said, this is a hidden gem. Don't worry about it. You'll like it. And then we just spent two hours in dead calm. <coughs> Swashbuckler. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Those are the movies we're talking about. <laughs> I, was, I was taking a drink and it went down the wrong pipe. <laughs> But speaking of thoughts and other people's opinions, how about a little bit of trivia, guys? Yeah, sure. Fire away. All right. So I'm going to follow. Really, real quick. Can we call this trivia? I mean, we're literally reading other user reviews. I mean, it's not trivia about the movie. Fair point. Uh, How about a a quiz? No, that's not a quiz. quiz. It's a Mm. quiz. I think that works. Yeah. So this is where we, uh, this is our little quiz section. I'm going to follow Nigel's format a bit. I'm just going to go off of the titles of some of these people's reviews and maybe give a little of what they said about it. This is, you know, one through 10. I give you what the title is. You guess whether it was one star, two star, blah, blah, blah. Normally I do five, but I'm going to go six because there was one that stood out a little bit. And I figured I'll add that in there. So if you're ready, I'll get started with this review from Agent 10. The title of their review was Fun and Cheesy. The perfect kids film. And you want to know what they scored out of ten? Yes. Uh, four and a half. Seven. Josh is on the money. This is, this is a seven star oh, review. Wow. They, they noted though that sadly this film proved to be nothing more than some weird reaction to E.T. So <laughs> that was still a fairly decent review. I figured I'd start off with a nice more optimistic one before I started going to the rest of them. This one being from B.K.O. Ganbing. God, these names, I swear to God. The title of this one is Where No Kid Has Gone Before? There's a question mark in the title. The question mark is in the title, yes. Uh, five out of ten. I'm going to go Josh? four out of ten. Nigel is closest. It's a six-star review. Oh, I almost said six, too. I yeah. Price is right did it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this cat said, The same concept was used as a frame for the Tim Allen comedy Galaxy Quest. So, which is not bad. Not bad. I like that film. However, Luke D. Simpson. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Real quick. He said it was used in the movie that came out 11 years later? Yes, because time travel, apparently. So he was comparing it to a movie that came out after it. This is the internet, Josh. He probably saw Galaxy Quest before he saw Explorers. Therefore, Explorers ripped off Galaxy Quest. That's how the internet works. Apparently. It's like saying, God, why does like Episode 4 in Star Wars, the graphics suck so bad when the graphics are so good in Episode 3? Uh, I've, actually sense. Seen, I've seen that argument unironically. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm pretty sure this guy meant what he said. Yeah, yeah, the internet. I'm sorry. Sorry, yeah. sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Speaking of meaning what they said, Luke D. Simpson, their review. You will feel like the guy who gets his eyes taped open in clockwork order. Oh my ten. God. Definitely a ten, right? <laughs> I'm going to say two. Nigel is three. Nigel has got it on the money. That's a, that's a two-star. Wow. I didn't even need to get anything else from that review. The title yeah. says it all. And for the record, Tom, don't take my fake answer as my real answer. God. <laughs> I'm, you sounded so confident when you were saying it, though, Josh. I'm not you. <laughs> oh, you could only dream of being me. But moving Those are called on. nightmares. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> 
Okay, review number four from Moonspinner55 says that this is a sub-Spielberg relic with too many bored preteens. Three. I'm going to go five. Nigel is just knocking it out. Holy crap, this is a three star. I think he's got the IMDb page open. Absolutely not. I don't. This guy's review notes that screenwriter Eric Luke goes out on a limb with this story, which by the time the film premiered, looked like leftover parts from E.T. and the Goonies. <laughs> review number five from David Sim 240183. His review title is To Boldly Go Where No Kid Has Gone Before. Far more assertive than a BKO Gangbin, whatever it's called. Eight. Boldly go where no kid has gone before. I'm going to say a seven. Josh has got this one closest. This was a nine Ooh, star. Ooh. Yeah. This guy goes on to say, Explorers may have an odd ending, but I still feel it's a high point in Dante's career, and it's refreshing to see a kid's film with a modicum of intelligence. And finally, number six. This one's from Aaron K. O'Donnell. First job. Wait, that's, that's it? it. That, <laughs> that's the title. First job. Wow. Uh, I can see why you added this one. It gives so much to us. Yeah, it's a... Wow. I mean, I've never judged a book by its cover, especially when there's no information on it. Um, I'll give, How about I give a little bit from the review? That might help. No, 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 no. I want to I wanna, no, 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 I, I wanna go with numbers based just on first job. I'm going to say four out of ten. Is it first job exclamation mark? Nope, just first job. I'm going to go... Fuck. <laughs> Six out of ten. What did you say again, Nigel? I said uh, four, I believe. Josh is closest. It's an eight star. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, so this one's going to be a longer one because I thought this was interesting. Uh, so this is what it says. So this was my first paying job as a background for this. It was filmed in my hometown, Fatalama. My older sister and I were both in it. And my strongest memories were when my mom pulled me aside to watch a couple of the main actors, uh, one of whom was Ethan Hawke, film a scene. She told me to pay attention because I never knew they might be famous one day. The other memory was playing games after doing homework on set. Love the experience and hope to share the experience with my boys. I had so much fun on set and being able to watch the finished project. So this cat apparently was on the film. So that's why I decided to include it. The fact that they were on it, they were starring in it, but it still only gave it 8 out of 10. I didn't know if that was a, a good thing or a bad thing. So, <laughs> well, I mean, you, you don't have to love everything that you're in. But uh, right. I'm going to go ahead and say Dan is the winner of this one since he got more on the head than I did. Oh, very much so. Yes. Nigel, the king is yours. Hooray! What's my prize? You get to watch the movie with us. Hooray! Yay! Wait, I'd, I'd rather have the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all I got from my side. Uh, anything else, fellas, before we dive on in? I don't have anything else. I, I might save them for my final thoughts, because before we started tonight, I watched the trailer for this movie, so I'm kind of trepidatious watching this. Only because I haven't seen it as a kid. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's another reason, too, I'm trepid about it i saw the trailer as well and when you watch movies you loved as a kid and then you go back and realize how much of an idiot you were when you were a kid our first yeah. episode our first episode teenage mutant ninja turtles 2 loved that movie as a kid and then watch it as an adult and i'm like uh can i go back to being a kid because kid me enjoyed this mm -hmm. adult me didn't like it very much and i know i mentioned this probably in that episode too but like i went back and watched the original batman as an adult and i didn't like it so I refuse to go back and ruin any fond memories I have of Batman Returns. So I don't know if that holds up today because I refuse to watch it as an adult. It doesn't. But we might get to it. We might get to it on the podcast though someday, Josh. You might. I would make an exception it. for the uh, podcast. Okay. Part of our shit and slide experience. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. You've ruined it for me now. <laughs> See, I disagree though. I still think '89 Batman holds up really well. I don't like Batman Returns that much, but I, I still think '89 Batman holds up really well. It's not as good as the Nolan Batman movies, and I don't think Michael Keaton's as convincing as a Batman as even Ben Affleck was in the Batman v Superman or the Justice League movies. But mm -hmm. well, I still think 89 Batman is a pretty good movie. And keep in mind, I was like probably rewatching it through that lens of watching. I think I think I last time I watched it was shortly after The Dark Knight or The Dark Knight Rises. Mm -hmm. So I'd had the lens of almost 25 years worth of Batman. 
I mean, because back when it came out, it was definitely groundbreaking. We'd never seen Batman in that type of dark setting because he was literally coming off the coattails of Adam West. Mm -hmm. That was most people's knowledge of Batman at the time. Mm -hmm. And it did set the trail that other Batman would follow Nolan's Batman and and the new one that's going to be coming out with Robert Patters. So Pattinson. we we have Pattinson. Why do I always want to put an R in there? I don't get it. Uh, we have the Keaton Batman to thank for that. Yeah. And who's to say, you know, the this might surprise us. Maybe this Explorers will hold up, even in like a cheesy 80s sort of way. Who's to say? But in, until then, how about we uh, go exploring, team? I hear you there. Yeah. Hey, uh, Tom? Yes? Play the fucking music. Language! <laughs> Welcome back to another stargazing episode of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and crossing guard, Tom. Now make sure you have your crosswalk buddy and keep in a straight line, because traffic gets heavy around this time on the highway. Watch out now! And speaking of heavy, we're keeping things light here with Explorers, the intergalactic portion of our field trip to Kingtown, which will take us to our most infamous of killer clowns from outer space, IT. Now, some news before we begin. We have a Discord now. You can connect to us on this new Discord by going to the front page of our Podbean page, firepit.podbean.com now the state the paint's still fresh and it still has that new discord smell so hop on in and join in on the discussion now it wouldn't be an interspersal segment without interspersing an ad now and again now would it so let's say we buckle up because we have an ad coming down the road tonight's episode is not sponsored by donato's so we would be enjoying a delicious donato's pizza had Donato's sponsored us with their amazingly perfectly cooked crust and their amazing toppings of pepperoni, sometimes jalapeno, sometimes even those wonderfully cut pineapple. With the ones with the cinnamon and the yeah. almonds. Mm, yes, yep. yes. Mm. Always a delivered on time and just, just perfect with that touch of love attached to it. But no, we're not being sponsored by Donato's. However, if we were, we would be thoroughly enjoying that pizza. Um, speaking of pizzas and slices of just wonderful things, I want to use this little moment to talk about Rob's custom PCs. Uh, giving them a special shout out because thanks to Rob and Rob's custom PCs, I am able to record this episode on a computer that does not suck. Rob's Custom PC specializes in custom-made gaming rigs. You give him the specs, or he has some custom-made outlines and such. I'm on a customized version of what he calls the King, which he labels it as a mid-range gaming system. And I gotta say, for a mid-ranger, this is a beefy box right here. And it was, for what he put in, a pretty darn reasonable price. Uh, he's located here in Ohio. Each of us here have had some dealings with him in a good way. Wow, dealings. I make that sound like a criminal venture. Yes, we've uh, we've had yeah, we've some dealings. We've uh, been sh shady things where we've passed the dough and <laughs> make sure the cops weren't watching. No, that's a lie. I'm not trying to... Uh... We well, didn't I, do this. Dan, I think you worked with him, didn't you? I did, and he's a hell of a tech. He's 10 years younger than me and forgotten more about computers than I'll ever learn. Again, he knows his way around a computer. That's for darn sure. Right now, he's only got a Facebook page. It's Rob's Custom PCs. Just reach out to him. He's got a lineup of PCs. I'm on the king, but he's got some other custom-made ones that you can order from. Or if you know what you want, just don't know how to put it together, just give him an email at Rob's custom pcs at gmail.com it's rob's custom pcs all one word very hard to say but easy to find let's let him know what you want what your budget is and he can work with you make something happen and you know work out how you're going to get it like i know I said, if he can make a computer like he can watch a movie that's got to be a fantastic computer <laughs> 
<laughs> well, considering my laptop that I've had for the past uh, five, six years now that I've been watching on, this is a, one of the first times that we've been able to sync lounge and watch a movie together where we haven't had to pause because my computer couldn't handle it. <laughs> In fact, I'm able to watch this on full resolution. <laughs> I know, and I gotta thank Rob for that. This was money well spent. He's not paying for this ad, by the way. This is just, in fact, technically I paid him. So he made out like a bandit on this deal. So yeah, technically he... it was a backroom dealing. He's like, <laughs> you're going to pay me and you're going to make an ad. And Tom okay. said, yes. Yes. Because I'm a terrible haggler. He is. He is. So again, you can find him on Facebook at Rob's Custom PCs. Or email him at robscustompcs at gmail.com. Let him know that the fire pit sent you, and he'll be sure to take care of you. And there you have it, folks. Our very first, mostly official, ad for the podcast. Now, if you want to have us get the word out about your products, or just want to have a word with us in general, reach out to us at Curtain Call Entertainment Inc. at gmail.com. That's Curtain Call Entertainment Inc. at gmail.com. Just put in the subject line what it is you're contacting us about, you know, whether it's an ad or a thought or anything, just around the, those lines, and let us know what it is. And we'll dream that we've responded. We won't actually respond, you know, but it'll be a nice dream for sure. That email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com, capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. Now, what say we peek in and see how the team is doing uh, during the film right now? Yes, I too like to watch boys when they sleep. I am not going to add that. Please don't. It's really, why is he dressed like a 50-year-old college professor? Because an 80s nerd, dude. Come on. It's like his parents purposefully sent him out to get beaten up. I'm going to grow up one day, and I'm going to bang Uma Thurman. Well, no, Ethan Hawke does one better. He grows up one day to cheat on Uma Thurman. Oh, wow. How can you cheat on Uma Thurman? I don't know. When you're a celebrity, you do crazy things. Well... See, this is the establishing shot where we know this kid is a mechanical um, and, and, and good at mechanics. He builds stuff. Much like how Josh is good at English. Yeah. This is the My establishing English bad. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the man who invents warp drive. Does he know he's wearing a catheter on his nose? I don't think he cares. Okay, so here's the magic of the 80s. Where is that going to plug in? Exactly. <laughs> There's no way that's portable. Where the fuck are the adults in this town? They are literally stealing part of a tilt a whirl and no one is there to stop them. Oh my god. I remember when I was younger and I was like third or fourth grade. I didn't understand what the word research meant. So I, I used my English knowledge at the time. You know, re means to repeat and search is to go find something. So when I had a toy Hot Wheels that was a research SUV, I remember thinking, okay, so that means that they can only search again. They don't do the first search. They only search again. So I played all of my uh, stupid like scenarios that I was playing was that somebody was lost, but they went and found them the second time. They couldn't help the first time. They went and helped the second time when they researched for them. <laughs> so wait, in your scenarios, someone's lost and in trouble. Like, sorry, this is your first time. I can do nothing for oh, you. Speaking of yes. Josh having yes. weird oh. theories on things. <laughs> and a mastery of the English language, as we've established. <laughs> Tonight, I'm definitely on point. So I realized that every time Josh gives us a backstory of his childhood, it always starts with my parents were cheap. <laughs> Oh, there's the battery. Oh, oh fucking okay. shit. That whole thing you was You can run a, an 80s computer off of a 9-volt battery. Fuck that. You couldn't run an 80s walkie-talkie off a 9-volt battery. Yarb. Tom, edit yeah, this out. Can... <laughs> okay, but I'm just warning you, son. Okay, LSD is a hell of a drug, right? I mean, seriously, meth is insane. Yeah, um, but I got to get back in there. We've got a, a meth fueled orgy going on yeah, in your uh, yeah, father's just, room yeah just to remind you the last time i was on lsd i let your father talk me into having you so <laughs> no you wouldn't breathe it well you could but you wouldn't survive you wouldn't breathe breathe it often long you wouldn't breathe it very long english hard night <laughs> yeah yeah
Josh was schooling us about magnetism and personal polarities. He can't form a sing a, a coherent sentence. Coherent. We make sentence? words hard. Coherent sentence. Jesus Christ! You guys are both like writers, and then one of you is an English major. Hey, I make words good. <laughs> Glad to see he recovered. I mean, that was near point blank range with a spaz twelve. So, thank God. Dan, I I, I don't want to have to explain this again, but that's a movie. It's not real. Uh-huh, whatever. Star Wars didn't actually happen a long time ago in a galaxy far, yes, far away. Yes, I know Star Wars is actually fiction, Josh. I know that. I'm not stupid. It's Star Trek that's a documentary. Thank you. That's why Zephram Cochran's in this movie. This was his early years. It's establishing him as a scientist. God, this music sounds familiar. Tell me it doesn't sound familiar. Yeah, it does. It sounds like the unused tracks from E.T. Can we just also address the amount of property damage? Can we also address the fact that none of this wakes up a single adult? Again, coming from an experience of living in a small town, all the adults are probably drunk or stoned. Oh, unit testing. Nobody does that. Yeah. Put it in prod and we'll figure it out. Yeah, we're doing agile now. This isn't waterfall. Who cares if it works? Just get it out there. Guys, he's dead. Will you play? show some respect, please? Yeah, Josh, respect the nipple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently somebody else agrees with me. Oh. <laughs> Am I high now? I think I'm high now. I don't think that was a popsicle I took in earlier. No, no, guys. <laughs> no. no, bad. Bad technical thingy. Bad touch. Stop. Eyes up here. Eyes up here. This is terrifying at a level that... Oh, oh God. God. Oh, what? God. No, no. What the hell is going on with this? They are 12. I don't care what anyone says. That is the kid from Stranger Things, okay? After this movie was filmed, they just put him in like a cryo tube and then woke him up for the Netflix show. So Why aren't you wearing any clothes? These three <laughs> aliens are here. Put on some fucking pants. I have a question for you. Why are you still wearing pants? Yeah, that is the real question of the day. No, it's not. It's not the question at all. I'm so glad you guys got our orgy invite. Take off your pants. I'm calling the cops. <laughs> These are the cops. Okay, let's be honest, though. If you were 12 years old and you were, like, one of three people in the world who were watching an alien sing human music, I mean, think about it. In the contents of the movie. Context yeah. of the movie. In the contents of the movie, guys, I make spelling and words make good sounds, right? <laughs> oh, my God. The, neighbors. the spaceship is a pipe. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, this is just an allegory for marijuana use in the Midwest. Well, I mean, are you watching this scene? That's not his finger. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> now we're watching a kid's first wet dream. <laughs> I am not including that. <laughs> eh, oxygen and heat shielding are just optional on spaceships anyways, right? They'll be fine. Now, for past and continued spacefaring adventures, check us out at firepit.podbean.com. Again, Podbean, as always, is the site for our podcast hosting with the mosting. So make the most of all of our past, present, and future episodes when you can. Oh, oh boy, it looks like the bubble's about to burst and send us back into that podcast. Thanks again for listening, and as always... Good luck. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call a sequel hook. Mm. That it never got. <laughs> Probably for the best. Da, 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 da. Classic 80s showing pictures with the in the credits. Right. They did this with Predator, remember that? That's right, they did, didn't they? Another rushed film. Yeah, no, Predator, War Pre Connection. Predator 2 was the rushed film. Predator yeah, was not. Predator wasn't. Uh, but both of them did that. Predator didn't show pictures in the end credits. They just did the turn to the camera and smile pose. All right. All right, so okay. who wants to do the summary? Uh, Since we kind of forced Tom to do it last week. I will say this. When I was listening to the other episodes, I suck at it. Well, you can try it again, Nigel. We'll Don't say, do, do you like want to do I it did. This week? Or do you want to do oh. Shawshank Redemption? Oh, good God. Hold on. <laughs> All right, so no pressure, Nigel. You have 45 seconds, and you cannot use the words A, then, or but. Okay.
Ethan Hawk, who ah, uh, you already failed. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Nigel. <laughs> okay, so uh, the movie starts with Ethan Hawk's character has a dream where he's flying around and he sees 1980s version of digitally animated computer components. Him and River Phoenix are best friends, and they have a shared dream. And their shared dream is about all these different computer components and some kind of code. They talk about it at school for a little bit and then they go back to River Phoenix's house where Zephram Cochran is spraying for bugs or something and they go down to the basement they put the code in the computer and shoot bullet holes into the house and they can't figure out where the bullet holes come from but then they later on find out that they put this program in the computer it creates force fields that miraculously have oxygen and don't kill people and they put River Phoenix in a force field on accident and they shoot them all over the place until they finally turn it off and uh, oh and also the kids have magic powers because they can turn turn on their computers without any kind of electricity, which honestly is a subplot that's not explored in the movie and I'm gonna dog it for that. But anyway, so the kids go and use their uh, electricity-free computer to build a spacecraft out of a tilt-a-whirl car and they make a bunch of noise and none of the adults hear it at all. And, and if they do hear it, they don't care, but they use the tilt-a-whirl thing and they make a spaceship out of a bunch of trash and then they put the force field around the spaceship and they fly around and then they go up into space and they a bunch of aliens that learned human language through television and movies then they get sent back home if the aliens telling them we'll contact you again to help you build a bigger and better spaceship and that never happens because there's no sequels to this movie so there nice right at the yeah, very wire. good good summary nigel you forgot about the kid who was coming to the other kid's house to rob him and then just said decided to hang out and help build the spaceship though i was still so enthralled with the fact that they got that computer to work without any electricity I know that is the key takeaway from this film. Yeah. Free like, electricity. Like, yeah. Free electricity. And they don't even do anything with that. So like you think the force field now, no fuck the force field free electricity. Yeah. Imagine you being able to take your computer anywhere at any time. Like you could be in a coffee shop and just be able to do computer stuff. Yeah. And every, just Taking amazing. a computer and just, it going anywhere? God, that sounds like a pipe dream, Tom. Uh, imagine being able to use your computer while you're sitting on your couch. Oh, that'd be crazy. Or what if, like, your computer was so small you could fit it in your hand? Oh, and play games on it at the same time. That's just getting into science fiction. There. Yeah, yeah, we're there's no way. That, yeah, we're getting into that crazy Spielberg science fiction crap that's just not realistic. This is what happens when you just try to insert magic into science. You just come up with the crazy ideas that will never work. Yeah. Now, Star uh, Trek, though. Oh, well, Star Trek. Well, that works in Star Trek, but that's fiction. That'll never happen. Shh, Dan's on the line. <laughs> So we just watched Explorers, and Nigel just explained Explorers. Um, who wants to go first about their thoughts? Actually, I, I want you to go <laughs> first, Tom, because I've seen this movie several times, and I'll admit it, it hit all the beats that I remember. But I'll get into that when I go on my... I want to hear your take on it first. Then I want to hear Nigel's, and then I'll go. All right. Well, honestly, well, let me just say, this was a laundry folding film. I would have had it on in the background. I'd look up like, oh, interesting. I wouldn't have turned this film off. It was much better than I thought it was going to be. The internet, the reviews, the trailer made it seem like one of those very cringy 90s kids movies. It felt like Iron Man 1 in terms of pacing. You know, the building, the discovery, the realizing the potential of the technology that they have. I love the parts where the kids were just trying to figure things out. It, it had a charm. It really was charming for me. I'm going to try to keep this as concise as possible. The problem I have with it, it, it feels like two films that were stitched together. This was Mulholland Drive. This was two films that they couldn't stretch out to two hours a piece so they just smushed them together that's how it felt but the competence in the directing and how it was stitched together it wasn't bad it really wasn't there was something that could have been goonies level if it had been had given time i'm i like this better than i did some of the other films we've watched in the past this was way better than swashbucklers i was expecting swashbucklers and i'm walking out of this i have some additional thoughts but i think they may build on what you guys will say next so josh if you don't mind me saving you for last i want to go to nigel next uh i will say that this movie also pleasantly surprised me i'm not gonna lie i'll come right out and say it i was expecting the worst 
in this movie. Not that I was expecting a bad film. I was just expecting one of those movies that you enjoy as a child. And when you watch it as an adult, you just kind of like, ugh, Kid Me was stupid. Kind of like how our first episode, Ninja Turtles 2. Like, I loved that movie when I was a kid. And then I watch it as an adult and I almost can't get through it because it's so hokey. So I was kind of expecting the same thing here. Also, when I heard or read that this movie was kind of a movie that was trying to ride that same wave that E.T. started, I had flashbacks to another really bad E.T. knockoff called Mac and Me. And, and, and I, so, and I say I've that seen- sarcastically. <laughs> I, I've seen Mac and me and it's terrible. It's when you order ET off a wish. <laughs> That's mean. Dude. That's mean. <laughs> and so, accurate. It wasn't, it's actually much, much better than Mac and me um, because it's not a direct knockoff of ET, which is good. It's its own movie tells its own story. Good. It has that ET kind of feel with the kids getting involved in something that's much bigger than the world around them. So it has that ET kind of feel to it. And it has a Spielbergian, whimsical mid eighties kind of a movie. Uh, But it, it pleasantly surprised me. I do agree with Tom. It feels like it was two movies kind of put together and it kind of sort of bogged down a little bit when the kids got to the alien spaceship, it stopped grabbing me so much, especially when that overly long period of them exploring the alien spaceship. (laughs) With the grabbing alien robot thing yeah it's just yeah and but that that whole sequence yes yes and that was disturbing on its own right and not in the horror movie kind of disturbing i don't know the movie kind of bogged down once the kids got into space and then went into the alien spacecraft and started looking around and all that but it picked back up again and then it, it was okay but it, like i said it pleasantly surprised me i can see why kid josh really liked this movie and kid dan would have enjoyed it immensely as well yeah um I was also reading the notes that while the movie did bomb in the box office, it was a huge hit on video and on movie channels like HBO and Cinemax and all that stuff. And I can see why. This is definitely a movie that parents would rent for the kids and let them watch it over the weekend. Let them watch it repeatedly over the weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's definitely (laughs) one that, yeah, you go after school on Friday and this is probably one that he's rented 150 times before and refuses to grab anything new. But it keeps him quiet on Saturday, so I'll let him watch it. It was definitely that kind of movie. That's it for my thoughts, though, at least my initial thoughts. So now I want to get your thoughts, Josh, because you're the only one who had seen this as a kid and had the nostalgia for it. All right. Well, I will admit, like I said, it's been a couple of years since I'd seen the movie. And even then, I was only half watching it. Like Tom said, a laundry folding film. So I will admit, coming into this, I was worried that, is this going to be crap? Did I get pick a bad movie? Because it's been so long since so I've really sat down and watched it. But I had the fond memories. And I know I'd, I remembered it feeling like Iron Man 1 levels of putting stuff together. And I'll admit, this thing hit every beat that I remember it hitting. I enjoyed watching it this time just as much as I enjoyed watching it as a kid. And yes, the last third of the movie just feels wonky, like you guys said. And after doing some research on the film, we finding out that it was kind of rushed to the end. That it makes a lot more sense. It's like maybe the transition from building the ship to meeting the aliens, the director wanted it to be smoother. So it's like you could see that it had a lot of the stuffs to be a great movie. Like I felt like I, I will argue, especially today, that this is a good movie. I enjoy this movie. It's not nostalgia driven for me. And I think you guys kind of helped validate that for me because I was afraid that this is one of those things that I thought I was looking at it through those nostalgia lenses and remembering it better than it actually is. It's not. This is a good movie. This is a movie that definitely qualifies more for cult classic than Swashbuckler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can. I would agree with that. I would also say that this is a timeless children's movie. I think oh, kids, yeah. the kids today can enjoy it just as much as kids in the 90s. Yeah, the kids today might think, oh, whether well, the special effects are or not special effects. Actually, the special effects are really good in this movie. I think the, the kids would see the older computers and, and stuff like that and be giggling about it. But just like E.T. is a movie that my daughter enjoyed just as much as I enjoyed watching it. I can still oh, yeah. see kids enjoying it today. I mean, think about it. The movie that this was in competition with, Back to the Future. Anybody who argues against that being a uh, timeless film is an idiot. I feel like this is the same situation. I mean, the only thing that would really date this movie is the use of computers. And the Walkman. Okay, yeah. Like, I would never want to see this movie remade. I would almost accept one of those long-distance sequels, but it's like, I would just love to see what the original vision the director had for this movie. Mm-hmm. I'm curious, too, because it was that whole stuff with, um, oh, now I can't remember the character's name. I wrote it down. Joe Dante. 
you, they had a whole thing where he's like trying to hunt down the kids and such, but that whole arc scene. Yeah, that just ended. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they even kind of established that the helicopter pilot guy... Uh, yeah, he uh, had dreams, was, too. He had dreams, too, when he was a kid. He even says, I haven't had these dreams since I was a boy. And that's it. I know he follows them, and he kind of congratulates them silently to himself, but they don't really do anything else with that plot throughout the rest of the movie. So I, I do kind of wonder if that ended up on the editing floor. Plus, there were some darker th- themes when they were on the spaceship when the aliens are addressing. You want to know why we don't come hang out with you? You blow shit up, dude. I feel like there was probably more to it than that and probably less of the aliens that they should have kept in. Mm-hmm. It makes you wonder, could this have been a Goonies level film if it had, oh, uh, yeah. had more time? And even think about it, we do, we got to know the characters fairly well, but we didn't get to know much about, with the exception of the River Phoenix character, their family situation. Like, I wonder if they had any more on the uh, mechanic kid. Because, you know, it's kind of implied that he doesn't have the best home, but it's never yeah. shown. Right. Ethan Hawke's character, you really don't need much on that one. You kind of see that he's from a well-to-do family. But, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like we don't learn anything about the backstory of these kids. But you learn who their personality is, and I think that's enough for Mm -hmm. this movie. I I think the way that the final edit worked is he made it work. I think he made it work really well. I I agree with you. It's like, what was left on the cutting room floor? What were your guys' opinions on the kid actors, Ethan and River and third kid, whose name now is I'm blanking on? I thought they did fine. This is River's first acting credit, and he's much better in Stand By Me. But that could also be with experience. He probably did get some pointers from other actors in this film. Hey, this is what you want to do. You do it this way. He he had a he was a much more convincing emotional kid in Stand by Me. But, but honestly, I thought they were fine. Ethan Hawke is he's not as good as an actor as he was as an adult, but he's good in this movie. And the other kid was fine. I mean, I didn't have a problem with him. They never made me cringy or awkward or maybe think kids don't behave that way. So sure. Although there were a few parts like. Wait, you mean saying River Phoenix character was totally like a 12-year-old in the 80s? <laughs> well, the, I'm, ta- I'm thinking the uh, creepy mechanic kid who was always like, yeah, let's go let's go bang some alien chicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's probably the most like a, a kid at that age. Yeah, and then also when they get the force field thing and the, the first thing they do is go and, and creep on the one chick they're all crushing on. I'm like, yeah, that sounds like something I'd do if I discovered that kind of technology. Oh, but then I would turn it on the bullies. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, like, like we were like, saying, like, you just close them in the bubble and lift them like 50 stories up and let it pop. Yeah, that's just exactly just shrink the do. bubble. <laughs> yeah. yeah, space exploration would be probably number four or five on my list of things to do. And that's after I've eradicated my enemies. So <laughs> yeah. step one, revenge. Yeah, step one, revenge. Step two, build spaceship. Step three, profit. You <laughs> no, know. No, no. Step one, sexy times. Step two, revenge. That definitely would have been my uh, old list of things in the order to do them in. So, no, I, I thought the kids were fine. There was a couple things, but it's not really the kid actor's fault. I, I'm still wondering how the hell they got that computer on with a 9-volt battery. <laughs> I live in 2020, and my laptop battery is way bigger than that. <laughs> Keep in mind, we are living in the darkest timeline. We are. Something happened. But I'm still convinced that time travel is not real because no one's come back to fix it yet. Or they keep trying to fix it and they're making it worse. This is probably true too. Yeah, the parable, like when you try to fix the past, it makes the future worse. Someone tried to go back and kill Hitler and here we are now. (laughs) But what about you, Josh? As far as the acting in the movie, I didn't have any issues with it. It's obviously passable as kid Josh and adult Josh watch this. But again, I was even thinking, it's like, Stand By Me, I thought the kid actors in that one were a lot better. But then again, the story required a lot more range of emotion. This one, the largest range outside of intense working was on shock and awe. There it is. That's the term. And that was really the only range that you need to do. And I would say, again, I'm not an actor, but those would be two fairly easy things for kids to pull off. When they uh, made the force field and basically bulleted through all of the books and the bookshelf and whatnot, shock and awe. I was like, oh my God, look at that, you know? So I would say that a lot wasn't required out of them, but I think that they pulled it off marvelously. And I'd have to agree with both of your thoughts on that one. With the exception of the mechanic kid, I thought, considering he was the only one with any real acting experience, kind of sucked. He did have a lot of that he did, right? It was just like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Again, I wonder how much of it ended up on the cutting room floor. I yeah, really do. It could have had a lot more with it. I mean, th- even Goonies had a crying scene. 
It's true, it did. So did E.T. Seriously, this movie feels like it needed another month of editing. I bet it could have been ten times the movie it is, and it's already a good movie. I think, Tom, I think your assessment is right. This could have been another Goonies. And we Mm -hmm. could be looking back on Explorers the same way we look back on Goonies. It could have overshadowed Goonies, Mm -hmm. given another month. And honestly, I bet you it would have been done a lot better in the box office if it was released in August. Oh, yeah, considering what it was up against in June. Much to Dante's credit, he tried his best. The cinematography was good. Even with the rush job and editing, the special effects still look pretty darn good. Josh, you were pointing out to the lighting effects that we're doing on the ship. Just amazing. This was ILM's first film. and Well, technically they... ILM was formed for the original Star Wars. You have a good point there, Josh. I, I don't, yeah. I'd have to check that. I didn't, I don't, I didn't read that trivia, so you may want to double check that. If it was their first film, I can see it being their first non-Star Wars. Mm-hmm. I will say this. I did, you know, Josh, you mentioned that you never wanted to see a remake of this movie, but I actually wrote in my notes, surprised this movie hasn't been remade. And then question mark, question mark, because because of the popularity of shows like Stranger Things and and things of that nature. I'm genuinely shocked that this movie either hasn't been made or there hasn't been a long form sequel yet where it's like Ethan Hawke's kid gets the dreams or something like that now. And they build spaceships together. You know, all honesty, as much as I loved this movie, maybe I will be willing to go back on that statement because, I mean, you think about it. This movie, you know, wasn't uh, it's no Goonies we've established. So Goonies mm -hmm. wasn't much of a Goonies either. If you go back and watch it. Well, I mean, like, uh, everybody and their mom knows about Goonies. You guys didn't know about this movie until a couple weeks ago. Good right. Point. Right. So, I'm just saying I'm shocked at this. This I put this movie in my list of movies that, like, The Last Starfighter and stuff like that. Like, I'm genuinely shocked this movie hasn't been remade. It, you know, it almost makes sense to do that because I know our, we commented. It's like, don't remake good movies. Remake the bad ones. And, like, I wouldn't call this a bad movie, but I mean, the premise of this movie it would be beautifully done today. I mean, shit, you're right. But remake this in the 80s setting like don't yeah. remake it in modern say remake it in 80s setting yeah you, you already have like or if you like nigel said just do a soft reboot where it takes place in modern times but like the kids that were from the movie or grown up have the kid from stranger things the kid missing his teeth have him be the kid of the mechanic they look the same yeah they do casting right there I, I was just thinking about that like i i if i was to do that i wouldn't make a remake i would make a long form sequel yeah and just have it be like ethan hawk's son or daughter is the one getting the dreams now and he and a, a new group of friends are building the alien ship and you know and they come across their dad's old plans yeah like just kind of like what they're a little what it looks i haven't seen the movie yet obviously because it's not out but kind of what it, what it looks like they're doing with the ghostbusters movie yeah where it looks like it's one of the ghostbusters kids finds all the stuff and grandkids grandkids yeah finds all the stuff I'm yeah. not saying they should do that, but it, it's shocking that this movie, with all the, with the current popularity of Stranger Things and shows like Stranger Things or movies kind of like Stranger Things, like it, we're, we're on our way to a movie that's kids' protagonists going up against something larger than themselves. So, Reginald, thank you for picking this one. This is yet another case where one of us has seen a film and vouches for it. The other two are kind of going in blind, and we all walk out feeling better about it than we uh, went into it. Congratulations. Yeah, The only movies that we've outright hated are movies all three of us hadn't seen before we watched it. Tom, you acknowledge that Aquaman sucked, but you acknowledge that Aquaman was a fun movie, and it wasn't, it, it wasn't a good movie, but it was a fun movie. And you did enjoy watching it. We said the same thing about The Life Aquatic, that it was a good movie. We enjoyed watching it. But the only ones that we've hated were Pathfinder, Swashbuckler, Dead Calm, movies that all three of us hadn't seen. <laughs> mm-hmm. So far, that's that's our average. Is if it, all three of us haven't seen it, it sucked. Oh, Running ahead, trend right. for sure, yeah. So uh, speaking of movies, what's the next one on the next stop, fellas? I don't have the list in front of me. Well, we are taking James Cromwell, Zephram Cochran himself, and we are going to watch The Green Mile. I don't know the name of that prison, but I know we're going to Shawshank afterward. Uh, I see. I've not seen The Green Mile, so I'm going in blind. Nigel, have you seen The Green Mile? <laughs> Last time I saw it was on VHS. And Both Reginald... VHS tapes, right? Yeah, it was. That's the last time I saw it. it was at my uncle's house when it was on VHS. I think so it came it, in on two VHS tapes because it was a longer movie. You know, either way, yeah, I thought it was the last time I saw it was I had to rewind a tape. So it's been a while. It's been a hot minute since I've seen that movie. And Reginald, have you seen it? I don't think I've seen it all the way through. 
Uh, I'm just saying, like, my parents love that movie. And so it's been played in my house a lot growing up. That came out in, what, 99? So, or something like that. I haven't seen it in its entirety, I don't think. But I've seen enough to know the plot of the movie. All right. So this is another case where one of us has definitely seen it. And two of us are kind of going in blind. So if our track record holds up, guys, we should be in for a good movie. Yeah. Uh, Unlike uh, Swashbuckler and whatnot, uh, Green Mile is not a cult classic. It's just a classic. (laughs) It's got some pretty high ratings. So I think we'll be okay. Also kind of follows the trend that the three of us have at least heard of it. Yes. Because none of us have heard of Swashbuckler. None of us heard of Dead Calm and... I don't think any of us had heard about Pathfinder because I know I confuse that with a different movie with Jim Caviezel. Again, I'm excited for this, but it wants to shout out to Sync Lounge and Podbean this time around. I, I think I did a little bit of that last time. Reginald? I think Dan's done the shout out to Sync Lounge. Oh, okay. Well, I'll do a special set shout out. Oh my God. I cannot talk tonight. I'm having we, a hard time with words. You guys make are contagious. Night. <laughs> I'm having, now I'm having a hard time with words. You guys are contagious. No, I'll say special shout out to Sync Lounge for letting us watch all these movies remotely, but still together. It's a fantastic service. It's a free service. It allows you to sync up your Plex libraries together, and you and multiple friends can all watch a movie like you're all sitting in the same room. It syncs up the times and everything. It's really great. Yeah, and it's uh, we've had a few glitches with it here and there, but other than that, it works fantastic. It, the whole reason we do this podcast, so... Shout out it to Sync Lounge. Makes this podcast possible, yeah. And uh, you can find us at firepit.podbean.com. There's also a link to our Discord channel on the uh, Podbean website. So please join us on Discord. You know, you can chat with us. You can talk with us. But most um, importantly, you can tell us all the ways we're wrong. Yes, because that's what comments are for on the internet. You guys are so desperate to tell us we're morons. Well, Discord's where you're going to go do that. So join us on Discord or, you know, if you want to be nice to us and tell us, hey, you know, maybe you guys should watch this or review that or you missed out on special trivia on this movie or this movie, let us know. And then you can also download us at anywhere, almost anywhere you can get podcasts at. So Google, Amazon, iTunes, Spotify. Spotify. So anywhere you can get podcasts is where you can download our podcast. You can also find us directly at firepit.podbean.com. Podbean, a fantastic podcast hosting site, home for such podcasts as Critical Role for all you D&D nerds like myself out there. That's great for that. And if you just want to listen to us directly, uh, go there where you can also find our Discord chat link and other such details in the information and past episodes. Who wants to shout out to the fans and friends of the podcast? Well, I will obviously give out a special shout out to Peggy, friend of the channel, our first subscriber. Appreciate you always listening to us. Always appreciate the feedback that you give me about the channel. And I'm so glad you enjoy it. And uh, again, glad you enjoyed the long rants that we have at the end of these movies. Reginald, and any, anyone new from your end or anyone special that you want to shout out to? Well, uh, our hundredth viewer, listener, Brad boys, like I hope you're still listening. I hope you enjoyed the show. But uh, hopefully we'll, if you get to be our 200th listener, we'll give you a shout out there too. We uh, got a lot of downloads this week, so we may hit 200 sooner than we hit 100. Yeah. And again, if you want to get your name shout out too, you know, let us know on Discord and or email at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. And because yeah, we haven't actually got anybody from or from our listeners to join the Discord yet, so the first one who gets it, there's a guaranteed shout out. Yeah, incentive. Dangle that hook, Josh. Oh, but it's until yo, oh, I know you dangle, sir. You dangle so good. <laughs> and if you want to listen to more of Josh dangling, catch us on the next episode. Until then, I've been Tom. I've been Josh. And I've been Dan. Thanks for joining the Fire Pit Podcast. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Stay safe out there. Hey, H comes before E, right? No. God damn it. I'm in the way wrong area of this alphabet. English is not Josh's first language. Tonight, English make difficult. Ooh, hey, a multi-syllabic word. I think we need to replace Josh sooner than later. I don't know. I'm not a very good programmer. I tried to program a Josh bot, and all it did was shout out anti-Semitic slurs. So it's just like a typical internet bot. Yeah.